Welcome to Trinity Lutheran's Lenten Small Group Experience Study, 180 Degrees, Episode 6. Today we're looking at Mary Magdalene, how she turned 180 degrees away from her sadness at the death of Jesus to joy when she saw him resurrected to life. For our first discussion question today, I'd like you to talk about in your groups, how would you feel if you went to the tomb of someone who you loved and found that they were not there? Take a moment and talk about that in your groups. Mary Magdalene came to the tomb on Sunday morning expecting to find the stone there and Jesus inside. But instead, what she found was the stone rolled away and the tomb was empty. Her first reaction was to run back to the disciples, Simon, Peter, and John, and tell them that Jesus had been taken away and she didn't know where they had put him. Take some time in your groups to read then from John chapter 1, verses 1 through 9. Take some time in your groups to read from John chapter 20, verses 1 through 18. Notice in verse 10 of John chapter 20 that Mary stood outside the tomb crying, and there were two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. And they asked her, Woman, why are you crying? The reason she gives, is that they have taken my Lord away and I do not know where they have put him. At this time you can see that Mary is obviously very upset because not only has she lost someone that she cared about deeply, but now she doesn't even know where to find his body. Of course, Mary did not realize that Jesus was alive, that he had risen from the dead. And so he appears to her in verse 15 and says, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it that you are looking for? Mary, thinking that he was the gardener, said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. And Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned around and cried out to him in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. You can see in the text how Mary turns 180 degrees from being sad and crying to now being overjoyed. It was all because Jesus called her by name, and she physically turned around and saw him there alive. Talk in your groups now about how you would feel if someone that was close to you died and when you came to their grave, not only did you find it empty, but you found them there alive. Jesus says in verse 17 of John 20, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet returned to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am returning to my Father and your Father, to my God and to your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. Take a moment and talk in your groups about what you would have thought of Mary Magdalene's proclamation that someone who is dead is now alive. Would you have believed her? Take a moment to discuss that now. I think Mary Magdalene is a lot like many of us when we experience the loss of someone we care about obviously very sad, but we take joy in knowing that our loved ones are with Jesus. Jesus says that he has to go away for a little while, but that they will be reunited in heaven. And that is how we can take comfort in losing someone that we care about, that we know that because of Christ's resurrection, that we will be resurrected also. The text continues in John chapter 20 with verse 24. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands, and put my finger where the nails were, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe it. I think we all have trouble believing God's word when it comes to something so wonderful as Jesus being raised from the dead and also our promise of eternal life. Thomas didn't believe until Jesus appeared among them and showed his hands and his side where the nails had pierced him and where the spear had pierced him. In verse 29, Jesus told Thomas, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believed. Jesus reminds us that we are blessed when we can have faith in the promises of God and in God's word. 
Take a moment in your groups to discuss maybe how you have troubles believing God's promises sometimes. At the end of John chapter 20 in verses 30 and 31, John says that Jesus did many other miraculous signs in the presence of his disciples which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. You know, John is talking about how all of this testimony is written down for one purpose, that we might believe in the promises of God through his Son, Jesus Christ. What is your response to the news that Jesus is alive? And how does this affect you and your life? Let's take a moment to talk about that now. Thank you for joining us for our Lenten Small Group Study 180 Degrees. To conclude our six weeks together, discuss what God has done to turn your life 180 degrees during this time in His Word.